who's got a question, raise your hand and uh, we will uh, come to you. Uh, microphone going to someone over here in the corner. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, can you comment on the connection made with Columbine? It, it seems so <laughs> not comparable uh, to the kinds of things that you know these kids were doing. Um, it was it just kind of a kind of convenient defense, or I mean that was so extreme and so not in any way related to these kinds of. Well, um, minor. the interesting thing about Columbine was um, two years before Columbine, juvenile crime was actually going down. And then Columbine hit, and school-based arrests started going up. Matter of fact, in Pennsylvania alone, school-based arrests went up by 300%, and juvenile crime was actually coming down. So Columbine, we believe, had a real effect. And the parents were afraid that, my gosh, you know, my kid could go to school and not come back from school. and so. They demanded teachers, um, parents demanded uh, action, and we reacted, and, and I think that's what happened. And I think it's, it's pretty substantiated in the data that we have that since Columbine, um, arrests within the system, school-based arrests, zero tolerance programs are alive and well all around the country post-Columbine. So, microphone here. Yes, hi. Um, my name is Ms. Tally Watson, and I'm a Baltimore City Department of Social Services social worker. And I must say, this is my first time in seeing this, but I read the book. I read a couple pages of the book. I am so upset. I'm angry. I mean, it's just like this this judge, I thought about the African poverty. It takes a village to raise a child. What does this judge, he's the village? I mean, what happened to the communities, the educationers? I mean, everybody surrounding these children before it gets to him, and he just locked these children up. And I read the book on a couple pages about one child got locked up because of throwing over a steak. Steak? I just, and I just thank you, Mr. May. I just thank you for bringing this enlightening up. I, I just thank you. And I thank the, the mother. Who I, you have my deepest sympathy. You do. And I just want to thank you. Go ahead. And uh, like you, Charlie, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> um, I thank you all. It's, uh, it's a beautiful story, and it's very, very, very important that these types of stories get put out there. Um, Michelle Alexander's recent book on the new Jim Crow also exposes this, and that figure that 95% is for nonviolent crime. By telling this message um, from the Obama administration to rulings on stop and frisk, people are coming out and making vulnerable children's voices be heard so that these things don't happen and shouldn't happen in our country. So thank you for making more exposure. Uh, there's a hand up back there. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get you first, and then we'll get a microphone up up top. I just wondered how you got the participation of the two judges. <laughs> Truly. Uh, well, the in fact, we weren't going to um, we weren't even to make the movie unless we could tell we can get access to the judges because we really felt like how are we going to tell this story of these kids um, and have people interested in seeing it because we really felt like no one really cares about any. Um, films that have uh, some sort of bigger picture in it and and you know I love documentary films and, and made a number of them and yet we felt like you know we, we, it was more interesting to us to, to find out what was behind the mask of the villains and so we approached uh, the judges and who I did not know before this and it took a while to be able to get access to each of them and I simply said look you know we're legitimate filmmakers and we want to tell the story literally from both sides um, there's got to be another side too, and I want to hear what it is and whatever it is, and and that was that. And uh, it, it took time for the, for it to sink in because Chivarella said, you know, he couldn't they couldn't talk to us because they were going through the federal investigation and the potential trial, and so he would talk to us after his lawyers, um, you know, after it was done, his lawyers wouldn't let him talk, and then he decided he wasn't going to tell his lawyers, and. Uh, and then agreed to be filmed. And the same thing with uh, Conahan as well. 
Um, and then none of the characters knew, not, not the kids, the families, or the judges, or anyone in the film knew who else we were talking to, so that we could sort of distill you know, the story from there. Um, and that was it, really. Denial is a very interesting place, isn't it? Thank you so much. <clears throat>
these are individuals to focus on individual um, cases like the judges, but that the whole uh, criminal justice system, uh, there's a push for extreme privatization of prisons. So as more and more prisons are being privatized, there is incentive to arrest young people as well as adults on minor charges because somebody is making a profit. And if citizens don't stop this, it's going to get worse. And people in the black community have already been the victims of this. And as people outside of the stereotypical black kids in the ghetto start to experience this, then perhaps you will see how this is really a growing problem in this country. Thank you, Thank you for your comment. Robert, I, I, that, that does uh, beg the question about the privatization of prisons, and, and I wonder you know, what, what your reflections are on that, uh, having spent all this time in this case. Well, I think one might uh, first go to that and say you know, that the privatization of prisons is one of the reasons this is all happening, and I think it's a contributing factor. I, I personally feel that society is a bigger contributing factor because I think that we demand consequences for every single thing that anyone does, both adult or, or, or juveniles. And I think that in particular, um, you know, when we get into schools, the schools in particular don't know how to deal with a, a kid that has a lot of spark, a kid that has, you know, um, just a lot of energy, and perhaps uh, all of these things scare society. And I really believe that that's a, that, uh, can, that in connection with uh, privatization, really makes for a really bad um, bad situation. On top of that, most juvenile court proceedings are held behind closed doors in private so that we don't know what happens behind those doors. And the idea of it was to protect the children so that, you know, they protect their reputations. But that in itself uh, can provide uh, a, uh, a, a place where corruption could occur, and especially if there's money involved. And again, when you have a society that says, lock them up, throw away the key, they do an, uh, an adult crime, they should do adult time. When you have all of that out there in society, it makes for a pretty tough recipe for something like this to happen. 